This we talked about the, uh, the cell BE architecture. Objectives here to give you some idea about what architecture look like. Okay, the difference between the um, the power PC, because the PPE, the SPE, and the uh, on one of the elements of the, uh, the of the system, the memory flow controllers, the um, EIB, the interconnect bus element interconnect bus. On channel, we go through the um, current microprocessor design, and then we look at the the cell components. This is the um, the layout of a typical processor, is a processor board that we have. This is, uh, we, I took this one from the power, IBM Power 5 Plus. Oh, on this board here, we can see that the, uh, the AOU, the execution units, consists of the floating point, the instruction um, units here, the uh, of FXU, FXU and FXU, the fixed point units, Instruction units here, the FPU, again, there's two FPU because this, this is a dual core. Okay, had replications of the components here. The IDU, IDU, uh, the load and store unit, load and store unit. So this is a typical real state of a Power 5 Plus and level 2, level 2, level 2 cache right here. And then we have the L3 directory control which connects into the off, off chips level 3 memory. Okay. Comparing with the, the cell BE, this is the cell BE. We have uh, the SPE and um, the processing. We have the uh, PPE uh, processing elements here. If we take this real state, okay, we, we drop on top of the IBM uh, the Power 5 Plus, we can see the how much real state of the cell BE here uh, took against the, uh, the Power 5 Plus. We still have, we eliminate all of those L3 memory controllers we eliminate the almost half of the L2, and we eliminate all of those FPU and PPU and so on. Okay. Architecture-wise, we said that the uh, the cell is, is based on the 64-bit power PC. This is the layout of the 64-bit power PC. We have the power instruction set architecture right here, with the memory map units and the bus interface unit talking to the memory on the I/O system here through this coherent bus. Okay, and then from this architecture, we're going to add some what we call the low plus the, the memory flow controller. We call the uh, added to local memory store here, local store memories, and then um, having the, the MMU and the DMA, which is a part of the MFC, the memory flow controller of the um, local store. So here we have a SPE. We add the SPE. This is the memory components of the SPE, okay? And then we said that if we can, how do we address, a, how do we provide a mechanism for each of these SPE, talk to each other SPE? So we aliasing, okay, the local store into the main memory. This is the main memories of the PPE, right? So you have a two, two layer of memory. The effective address, uh, we call the main memories, and the local store of the SPE. And the local store memories aliasing onto the effective address to allow you to address any location in the memories. In addition to this one, now having adding the memory portions, we add in the, 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 um, the processing portion here. We recall the, um, the SP, SPU, right? And here, this, this SPE here, has its own instruction set, okay, has its own instruction um, units. It's different than the, the PPC units right here. It's different completely, okay. We look into that the, um, the, uh, the offload models, we, we call this offload model, we, call, we wear the DMA now into, DMA the data into and out of the local store. That action or that activity is a is equivalent to the load and store doing uh, activities running at the power. And the same thing, the load and store of the vector registers as well, okay? We also support the shared memory models. On the power architectures, compatible addressings, now you have a large address, and then you can uh, dedicate a set of, uh, a set of address you're using for your shared memories, and you can provide 
synchronization mechanism to synchronize your access to that shared memory as well. Okay. Now, this is the um, overall view of the, um, the cell problem engine, right? We have, again, we have a low level 2, we have an SPE, and so on. And this environment here, we look at the PPE core, we have the VMX units, we have a level 1 cache, level 2 cache, 2 SMT, you see them before. This is the block diagram of the PPE. We have the full flow of the uh, instruction units over here. We have a VMX units over here. And we also have with the load and store units over here. With the fixed bone units, we have a branch execution units. We have a load and store units. Fixed bone units still mixing with the load and store execution units here. For instructions, there's a VMX. VMX instructions will be decoded, eight of them over here, fetching the, the instruction, okay, go through the pre decodings, identify the data, get into the uh, level one cache. Fetching the fetching the the, the data in, uh, dispatching based on whether or not should we go to the um, um, level one, uh, should we go to the um, which pipe that we go right, which well, not which pipe but which um, um, processing unit that we're going, because it's upon the two threads here, which threads which instruction belong to which threads, okay, decoding the data. Um, resolve the dependency of the data, issue the instructions to the either these units here or to the VMX, perform the um, computations, and then get back to the, um, the data here, the uh, instruction flush. Okay, here is the elements of the um, SPE. We have with the uh, 128 bit of 128 of 128 bit registers. We have the local store, 256K byte. We have the MFC. And this processor here can be run in the isolation mode to support the securities on this, air, on this cell here. And um, securities or, or isolation mode, when it's running, this means it's only a, a specific window on this SPE local store memory it can be accessed to someone outside. So you come, this SPE, when it's run on the isolation mode, it will be completely isolated from the rest of the processing uh, units here. The SPU organization, we saw it before. We have an SPU core, and we have the, uh, the DMA units right here, and we have the local memories, and we also have what we call the channel unit. Channel units is a set of 32 uh, channels or registers that we use to transfer or to contain the data will remove the data between the SPE and the PPE. Okay. The local store. Local store is very, very um, uh, different on the cell organization here. We have a no, we have a the concept of never misses on the local store. Why? Because we don't have any, any prefetching and any, any virtual memory associated with the local store. What we have is a physical address of the local store, 256 k byte. No protection whatsoever, right? It's up to you to protect that address. If your program running in something and in intrusions or, or some, some sort of trying to defeat your program, in, intrude your programs, you can destroy the data. It's up to you as a programmer. So we remember, we have a no virtual memory mapping here, right? And we have a, what we call the software managed caching. So to provide you some mechanism to access that, that data when you need it, okay, eliminate the latency of data transfer. When you request the data, and then when you receive the data, that latency here, that latency will be eliminated if you use some, some mechanism we propose here, one of those called the software managed cache. We provide a large register file, and then we also can move the data from one store to another one. No translation we set over here, and no memory mapping. Uh, can we map a system memory, but there's no virtual memory, virtual memory mapping. One of the, uh, the key points here that I didn't mention is, uh, is the predictable real-time behavior. Right? We get the data, we have the data, so we always running without the, the second tier memory, we never miss. We do the branch, we never miss, because you know, we only hint we give it some hint, and that branch prediction will be taken at this exactly precise upon and so on. 
So what we have in here, we always have a predictable performance on the real-time applications that you have. You always guarantee to have the same data, the same performance, the same timings coming back every time that you run that application. DMA and multi-bufferings. We use what we call the DMA concepts to move the data in between the SPE and the PPE. Okay, latency, we talked about the latency, we use the software cache models. We also, software managed cache model, we also talk about the multi-bufferings. You, you, you learn some programming basics. If we want to uh, optimize your, 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 your data movement from one piece, from location to another location, and continuously streaming that set of data, you have to provide some more than one buffer so you can f flip back and forth between the buffer that's receiving your data so you can always have the data available to you, right? Same concepts here. Channel, we use a channel to pass the data, the, the I.O. between the I.O. device and the PPE and from the PPE to the SPE, okay? From the SPE to the PPE, we use the channels and uh, we, we use um, um, MMIO, memory map IO registers, to pass the data from the PPE to the SPE. This is a, the, this chart here showed the SPU organization. Okay, we have a different units here. We have a floating, we have floating point units, by units, and fixed point units. On one pipe, on the other pipe, we have a channel units, per mill unit, branch unit, load and store units. All of the execution arithmetic units reside in one pipe. Okay, all of the memory related instruction reside in another pipe. So you have a two pipes. So what it means is that if your instructions, okay, if two instructions, one follow another, are independent each others, then related, one is using the um, arithmetic units, one is using the memory related um, units, those two, issue, those two instructions can be issued in parallel in the same cycle. And of course, those two instructions, one is issue, can be executed in parallel as well. Okay, so that's what we call the, the dual issues organization right here. Okay, so remember, we have a two pipes under the SPU, and each pipe will perform a very specific functions, as, um, arithmetic related functions or instruction related functions. And those can be, in, uh, can be executed in parallel as well. We use a DMA to transfer the data, very high bandwidth, Okay, and this is a block diagram showing the pipe, the floating point units, and the fixed point units in one side. Remember, on the PPE side, on the PPE layout organization, you see the branch and the fixed point unit the same on the same pipe, right? And then you have the VMAX and different. On this organization here, you look at you don't see the VMAX because every instruction down here is a VMAX instruction, are the vector instructions. That's not the VMAX, the VMAX instruction referring to the instruction on the PP on, on, on the PP only. This SPU instructions different than the different instruction set and different is instruction set differing than the PP instruction, than the VMAX. Okay? And here we ha we have the set of the two pi two pipe, uh, the floating point unit, fixed point units, and the permute, load store, branch unit, and channel units. Okay, instruction coming, up, coming in from these DMA units here. We have a single port on the 128-bit read and 128-bit 128 read and 128-byte write. Okay, coming, coming in from these DMA units, then we issue instructions, go to register file, load the instruction to the register file, and, and running on. Local store, single port SRAM. The key point here is that we have a single port SRAM. That SRAM single port has a supply one. You have to supply instruction to the SPE to run, right? SPU require instruction. You have to do the DMA, you have to transfer the data as well, right? So, and, 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 and also, you have to do, to do the, the DMA, you have to do the instructions, um, fittings, and you have to do the load and store as well. You use this port here to do the load and store to the registers. Okay? So this single port SRAM performs three functions. Um, will be used gating by three functions. Loading the instructions, receiving the DMA transfer, and also the, um, um, the load and store for the vectors. Each of those operations has a different priority. 
Okay, so you know, the priority, the highest priority is the, the DM8. When you do DM8, you need to have data right away in the load and store. And finally, instruction fetch. Okay, instruction fetch or the bringing up the, the, the instructions from the local store is a, the third priority. So you will see that those priorities and how do we play those priorities later on into some of the, um, on the, uh, the later presentations. We talk about SPE issues. In order, every instruction executed must be completed. All right, no out of order here. Doing issues, two pipes. You have instruction swap for a single issue. Okay, if we're running some things, okay, and, and we do have a um, dependency, okay, we're going back to the single issue. We only can issue one instruction at a time instead of two. And here's uh, the pipes, the presentation on the, the left and the right, depending on which instruction that we have. We have odd pipe, and we call the odd and even pipe side. Okay. Here's the diagrams of the, um, the, the timings on different stages. Each stage represents a cycle. So you look at the, on the left side, the symbol fix fx, where, for example, running at pipe zero. Right? Pipe zero is our, our even um, pipe. Okay, and, and this uh, FX over here will require two cycles to complete. The shift FX, the single precision FP, six cycle, floating point integers, seven cycle. Okay, byte, four cycle, permute, four cycle, load and store, six cycle, branch and channels. So each of these on the right side, each block represents the stage you're going through, and each of, each of the stage requires one cycle. SPE branch. Com, um, Prediction costs you about 18 cycles if you do a miss, right? And it's not bad for 11 uh, FO4 processor or whatever. What we thought about here is that it, they, it will cost you some cycle if you mispredict your branch. We provide some instruction we call the branch hint to help you to, um, to predict the branch targets. Okay? And um, 18 cycles for these machines is um, it's not a whole lot because, you know, uh, we, we can hide those cycles as well. On the traditional systems, we may miss um, about 80 cycles, 120 cycles, for example, on some of the machines on the Power 5. Okay? So the, 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 the branch penalty avoidance technique that we discussed here, we will go to later on and to the details later on. So for example, unroll loops and branch targets, uh, loading the, the, the targets, every time you get the, um, the using the branch hint instructions. SP instructions, Scala processing uh, instructions support on data parallel substrate, right? All instructions on data parallel. Every instructions on your, on your um, SPEs affect instruction and they are in parallels, okay? And then if you have a, a Scala data, we will put into some what we call the preferred um, slots. And each of the slot very well defined is depending on the data type of what you have. You have a byte or the half word or address, 32 bit address or 32 bit word and so on. As we will put into where which byte, the fourth byte or the second and the, the third and the fourth or the, 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 the first four bytes. Okay? Memory mapping. This is the memory mapping units we have at the um, 16 byte per cycle and the bandwidth is about 25.6 gigabyte. Okay, this is the detail of the MFC. We have the load and store, we have the SPU here, we have the DMA engine, atomic facilities to allow us to, to, to implement the cache co coherency, MMU, memory translations, and the uh, IMT, remote memory transfer, and do DMA Q and MMIO. We'll discuss some more of this, guys. <coughs> some of the resources on the SPE, uh, from the hardware point of view, we list the, uh, the, um, the, um, the, um, the list of the, uh, the commands that allow you to interface with the, uh, the, with the, um, the hardware components. Okay, uh, here we, we list uh, at the 4K physical page boundaries. And here is the uh, post SPE resources. Uh, 128, 100, we have 128 uh, bits GPR and external events. Some of those events are more, more or less just the hardware events and uh, just allow you to control the resources only. Okay? From the programmer point of view, moving the data 
in and out of the, uh, the, the um, SP and PPE. Okay, we use some DMA commands like a put and get. Remember, look, you look at this one, you see the only two commands, get command and put command, right? And then after that one, we add some pref and, and suffix, like a put S, put TR, put L, put RL, right? To, 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 to provide a different semantics or to identify the different operations um, for, for, for the same instructions, okay? We provided some, some uh, from cache management commands, uh, provide some synchronization commands, where you issue a set of, of commands, DMA commands. You want to make sure that all of the, uh, of the data that you, that you want is coming back into order on the fashion that you want to come back, all right? The EIB, EIB is, um, is a very uh, fast switches, okay? We have a 96 byte per cycle bandwidth, okay? And then uh, this is this is um, the the hardware uh, realization implementation of this this um, this EIB consists of four rings. You have a two rings running counterclockwise and two rings in the clockwise, and each of them, you know, um, uh, has a different uh, um, has a different bandwidth. Okay, and have a different not a different have they, they over. They provide uh, the support for all more than hundred um, outstanding requests at any given sense of times. Okay, the, the speed here we talked about three hundred and seven point two gigabyte um, per second bandwidth between the, the units. The re realistically, we look at two hundred and something, two hundred and four gigabyte per seconds. Okay, and here is the um, the hardware layout of the EAB. You have a two counterclockwise and two clockwise here, and uh, we have a, the data arbitrator here to arbitrate or to manage the, the data movements between those components. Um, a, an example shown here, where you have a different rings: ring zero, ring one, ring two, ring three, in different colors, and you have a different components: MSC or SPE zero, one, two, three, four, and the bus interface are right here and the I.O. interface right here. Okay, so on the PPE, you look at the red one over here, we have a data movement between the SPE zero, go straight through here and go to PPE. At the same time, still on the red ring, right, we have the red ring here, we have a data movement between SPE one to SPE three, and from the I.O. F1 here, go down to SPE four. So you, have, when you look at this ring, so you can transfer between the components you know, between the components, between the I.O., between devices, to the, the different the PP and SP at the same time. How can we do that? Because each of them, each of the SP, they have a different, they have an independent MFC. The integration of the EIB and the MFC allow us to do these activities. I.O., we have the I.O. interface, 16 bytes per cycle. We have two of them. We have the flex I.O. And we have a, the one for the for the I/O and one for the, the memory com, com, controller, okay. And here is the typical configurations when you put the system together. On your left over here, you only have the XDI XDI memory. This is the cell BE processors and hook up two processors together. So this is the typical cell BE processor. Okay. On the right side, on the top here, you have, you put two together, okay. And then on the, on the lower ends here, you have a put four together. This is the go to the subway switch. We form an SMP system. You see, the maximum SMP configuration is about four uh, processor hook up together. If you go beyond the four, okay, you use the, 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 the I.O. interface, hook up the system together and to form a cluster. Okay, using that clustering concepts and using that I.O. interface, you can form you know, as, as large as the cluster is possible. You know, based on the application, of course.